Beneath the facade of Saudi Arabia's religious sentiments, futuristic projects, and oil-driven economy, lie several shocking secrets waiting to be discovered. Recent findings have revealed a deep connection between Saudi Arabia and notable biblical sites like Mount Sinai. This shocking discovery has left people asking, is this a confirmation of the Book of Exodus? Why did the Saudis choose to keep this hidden from the public eye? In this video, we bring you what atheists just discovered in Saudi Arabia that terrifies the whole world. The criticisms of biblical figures, events, and sites by atheists are numerous and widespread. However, certain sites, such as Mount Sinai, have managed to maintain their credibility due to their status as sacred places for multiple religions worldwide. Mount Sinai is where Moses is believed to have encountered God and received the Ten Commandments. The enduring significance associated with this site has firmly established its importance. However, numerous debates have been sparked throughout history regarding the actual whereabouts of Mount Sinai. In an effort to unveil its location, researchers have unearthed several well-guarded secrets of Saudi Arabia. But before we unravel the mysterious connection between the site of the burning bush and present-day Saudi Arabia, let's start by introducing you to Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai has a rich history and symbolism, making it significant in religious traditions such as Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. According to biblical and Quranic narratives, it is believed to be where God revealed His laws and commandments to Moses and the Israelites. God called Moses to the mountaintop and gave him the Ten Commandments, which serve as the moral and religious foundation of Judaism and Christianity. Similarly, in the Quran, God spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai and presented him with the tablets of the Torah, an essential part of Islamic scripture. The Torah is known as the Pentateuch, or the Five Books of Moses. The word Torah comes from the Hebrew word meaning instruction or guidance. The Torah is considered the foundational text and serves as a guide for Islamic religious and ethical practices. Muslims believe that the Torah, like other divine scriptures, was originally a message of guidance from Allah to the people of that time. Mount Sinai represents God's grace, mercy, holiness, and justice for Christians. They perceive the giving of the law to Moses as not only a guide for the people, but also a revelation of their need for a savior. Jesus Christ fulfills the law through his sinless life and sacrificial death. Christians learn from Jesus' teachings, such as the Sermon on the Mount, which emphasize living according to the Spirit rather than just the letter of the law. Mount Sinai, for Christians, foreshadows the heavenly Mount Zion, where God dwells with his people in glory. Jews consider Mount Sinai the most sacred place on earth, where they encountered God uniquely. They believe that God chose them as his special people and bestowed upon them the gift and responsibility of the Torah. The covenant between God and the Israelites at Mount Sinai solidified their identity and destiny as God's faithful servants. In Islamic tradition, Mount Sinai is recognized as one of the locations where God imparted his wisdom and will to humanity through various prophets, including Moses. Muslims hold Moses in high regard for his patience, obedience, and delivery of God's message. Where is Mount Sinai? The most widely accepted location of Mount Sinai is a granitic peak called Jabal Musa, or the Mountain of Moses, situated in the south-central Sinai Peninsula of Egypt. Over time, the area became a place frequented by hermits. In 530 CE, the monastery of St. Catherine was established at the northern foot of the mountain. This ancient Christian monastery, housing a library of biblical manuscripts, is believed to be the world's oldest continually inhabited Christian monastery. Mount Sinai is a moderately high mountain, standing at 2,285 meters, 7,497 feet, near St. Catherine in the Sinai Peninsula. It is surrounded by taller peaks within the mountain range, including Mount Catherine, the highest peak in Egypt, reaching 2,629 meters, 8,625 feet. The summit of Mount Sinai features a mosque still utilized by Muslims and a Greek Orthodox chapel enclosing the rock, believed to be the source of the biblical tablets of stone. Additionally, Moses' cave, where he awaited the reception of the Ten Commandments, can be found there. Despite the widely accepted location in Egypt, certain sites in Saudi Arabia have been proposed as alternative locations for Mount Sinai. 
One such proposition was made by Charles Becker, an English traveler, geographer, and biblical critic, in 1873. He initially suggested Mount Sinai to be a volcano based on biblical descriptions. Although his volcanic theory was later withdrawn after visiting a non-volcanic mount, Becker still advocated for its identification as Mount Sinai due to its geographical position and historical associations. In 1873, Charles Becker, an English traveler, geographer, and biblical critic, put forth a controversial proposal regarding the location of Mount Sinai. In his pamphlet titled Mount Sinai, a Volcano, he argued that the biblical descriptions of Theophany and Mount Sinai indicated that the mountain was a volcano. Becker further suggested that the mountain should be along Moses' route when returning to Egypt from Midian in northwest Arabia. In 1874, Becker visited the location he had proposed as Mount Sinai, but discovered that it was not volcanic. As a result, he retracted his volcanic theory. However, he still maintained that the place he identified, known as Jabal al-Nurai Mountain near Mecca, which holds significance for Muslims as the site where Muhammad received his first revelation, could be considered Mount Sinai. Becker also believed that this mountain was the original location of the Kaaba, the ancient sanctuary predating Islam. Despite Becker's advocacy, his suggestion of Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia did not gain widespread acceptance among other scholars and explorers. The controversy surrounding his proposed location continued to be debated and differing opinions within academic circles. Alois Musel and H. St. John Philby were other explorers and scholars who suggested Mount Sinai's likely location in Saudi Arabia during the 20th century. They identified Mount Sinai with Jabal al manife a mountain near Wadi El Horeb, about 20 kilometers north of Juna. Musul argued that Mount Sinai was situated on the eastern side of the Gulf of Aqabar, in the territory of Midian where Moses had lived before returning to Egypt. In 1910, Musul visited Jabal al Manifa and found it a suitable candidate for Mount Sinai based on its geographical position, historical associations, and local traditions. St. John Philby, a British explorer, diplomat, and spy, extensively traveled in Arabia. He became a close friend of Ibn Saud, the founder of Saudi Arabia. In his book, The Heart of Arabia and Arabian Highland, published in 1952, Philby confirmed Musil's identification of Jabal al manifa as Mount Sinai. He noted that the mountain had a mosque on its summit and was revered by local Bedouins as a holy place. Philby concluded that Jebel al manifa was the most convincing location compared to other possibilities in Egypt and Jordan. Furthermore, in 1971, another scholar named Jean Koenig from France put forth a different hypothesis regarding the likely whereabouts of Mount Sinai. Koenig contended that the descriptions of Mount Sinai in the Bible aligned with the characteristics of a volcanic peak known as Jabal al Laws, situated near al Bad in Saudi Arabia approximately 100 kilometers east of the Gulf of Aqabar. Koenig's proposition was based on various factors, including the distance and direction from Egypt, the presence of water sources and vegetation, the suitability for camping and grazing, and the geological and topographical attributes of the mountain. In his analysis, Koenig found that certain aspects of the proposed locations in Egypt, Jordan, and Israel fell short. He asserted that his suggested location was the sole mountain that fulfilled all the requirements outlined in the biblical narrative. Koenig's earlier explorers and scholars who proposed similar ideas influenced the suggestion of Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia. However, Koenig was the first to identify Hala el Bedra as Mount Sinai, providing more detailed arguments and evidence for his hypothesis. Emmanuel Anadi, an Italian archaeologist, conducted extensive research and fieldwork to locate Mount Sinai. He devoted a significant portion of his career to investigating the southern part of the Sinai Peninsula as a potential site for Mount Sinai. Anadi based his hypothesis on a multidisciplinary approach incorporating archaeological, geological, and anthropological evidence. He conducted numerous surveys and excavations in the Sinai Peninsula, particularly surrounding Jebel Musa, Mountain of Moses, and St. Catherine's Monastery. One of Anadi's key arguments stated that the landscape of the southern Sinai Peninsula closely matched the biblical descriptions of Mount Sinai. He pointed out the presence of rugged mountains, rocky terrain, 
and natural formations aligned with the biblical account of the Israelites' journey through the wilderness. Anati also studied the rock art and inscriptions found in the region, suggesting that they could be connected to the biblical narrative and the Israelites' presence during their time at Mount Sinai. He interpreted these rock engravings as representations of sacred events and rituals associated with the biblical accounts. Furthermore, Anadi emphasized the historical and cultural significance of the southern Sinai Peninsula, highlighting the presence of ancient trade routes and pilgrimage trails that could have facilitated the Israelites' journey to and from Mount Sinai. One of the most renowned theories was from the controversial Ron Wyatt. Ron Wyatt, an American nurse anesthetist in a hospital in Madison and amateur archaeologist, suggested Mount Sinai's likely location in Saudi Arabia. He claimed to have discovered the site of Jabal al-Laws, a mountain near al-Bad, based on his interpretation of the biblical narrative and his observations of various features and artifacts. Wyatt also claimed to have found other biblical sites and relics, including Noah's Ark, Sodom and Gomorrah, the Ark of the Covenant, and the blood of Jesus. Wyatt's suggestion of Jabal al-Laws as Mount Sinai was based on several arguments. He considered the distance and direction from Egypt, suggesting that the Israelites crossed the Red Sea or the Gulf of Akabar, supported by ancient sources such as Josephus and Eusebius. Wyatt calculated that Jabal al-Laws was within an 11-day journey from Kadesh Bar, where the Israelites camped before and after their stay at Mount Sinai. He also pointed to the presence of water sources and vegetation, claiming to have found a large split rock near Jabal al-Laws that could be the rock Moses struck to produce water for the thirsty Israelites. Wyatt mentioned almond trees near the mountain, which he believed could be related to Aaron's rod that budded. Wyatt also emphasized the suitability of Jabal al-Laws for camping and grazing. He claimed to have found a large plain at the foot of Jabal al-Laws that could accommodate millions of people and their flocks. He mentioned stone enclosures and pillars that he believed to be the remains of the Israelite camp and altars. Wyatt referred to the geological and topographical features, stating that he found evidence of fire and smoke on the top of Jabal al-Laws, which could correspond to the divine manifestations on Mount Sinai. He also claimed to have discovered a cave on the mountain that could be where Moses met with God. However, Wyatt's suggestion of Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia was controversial for several reasons. He lacked formal training or credentials in archaeology, and his methods were considered unscientific and unsystematic. He did not conduct legal or licensed excavations, or publish peer-reviewed reports or papers on his findings. Wyatt faced criticism and opposition from both secular and religious authorities, and he was arrested and jailed multiple times by the Saudi Arabian government for trespassing and smuggling artifacts. His claims caused confusion and division among his followers and supporters, leading to the fragmentation of the Wyatt Archaeological Research Organization after his death. Joe Zias, curator of anthropology archaeology with the Israel Antiquities Authority, said about Ron Wyatt, Mr. Ron Wyatt is neither an archaeologist nor has he ever carried out a legally licensed excavation in Israel or Jerusalem. To excavate, one must have at least a BA in archaeology, which he does not possess despite his claims to the contrary. We know his claims, which border on the absurd as they have no scientific basis, nor have they ever been published in a professional journal. They fall into the category of trash, which one finds in tabloids such as the National Enquirer, Sun, etc. Amazingly, anyone would believe them. Ron Wyatt's critics describe him as a sensationalist pseudo-archaeologist whose works shouldn't be considered. However, the popularity of Ron Wyatt's findings has grown regardless. The search for the true location of Mount Sinai has sparked curiosity and debate among scholars, historians, and explorers. Some biblical experts have put forth the intriguing suggestion that Mount Sinai might be located in Saudi Arabia. One prominent argument revolves around the teachings of the Apostle Paul to the Galatian Christians. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 25, it is believed by some that Paul indicated Mount Sinai's location in Saudi Arabia, specifically in the region of Midian. However, upon closer examination of the original text, it becomes clear that Paul's reference was to Mount Sinai in Arabia without specifying Saudi Arabia. 
This raises questions about the validity of connecting the site to modern-day political boundaries. To understand the broader context, we must delve into the historical and scientific evidence that sheds light on the fascinating past of Saudi Arabia. In ancient times, the Arabian Peninsula, including the Sinai Peninsula and northern Egypt, was a land of abundant vegetation. Astonishingly, this arid desert we see today was once adorned with lush greenery, as documented in scientific and historical records. The Quran, the sacred scripture of Islam, reveals breathtaking descriptions of Allah's creation, encompassing the sun, moon, stars, mountains, seas, plants, animals, and humans. Moreover, the Quran contains historical references to events and places in Arabia, providing valuable insights into the geography and climate of the region. Similarly, ancient researchers, travelers, and geographers such as Herodotus, Josephus, and Eusebius have chronicled the bountiful mountains, valleys, rivers, forests, and spices that characterized Saudi Arabia in bygone eras. Scientifically, fossil records further bolster the notion of a diverse and flourishing ecosystem in Saudi Arabia's past. Imprints and remains of elephants, hippos, crocodiles, and even seahorses have been discovered, attesting to the existence of rivers, lakes, and thriving aquatic fauna and flora. These fossils, dating back as far as 350,000 years or more, provide compelling evidence that Saudi Arabia experienced a wetter and greener climate during ancient times. The astonishing discoveries do not end there. The geological records of the region reveal traces of former river channels and lake basins, testifying to the presence of abundant rainfall and a freshwater ecosystem that once thrived in this arid land. Chemical compositions and isotopic ratios of rocks and sediments unveil the varying climatic conditions that shaped the formation of these geological formations, painting a vivid picture of the diverse climates that Saudi Arabia has experienced throughout its history. While the theory regarding Galatians 4, the 25th of May, not be accurate, it does not eliminate the possibility that Saudi Arabia could be the actual location of Mount Sinai. Several evidence support this claim, pointing to specific locations in Saudi Arabia as the true Mount Sinai. And here is the most important piece of evidence. In northwestern Saudi Arabia, a protected area has drawn the attention of explorers and researchers. Despite the evidence being confiscated by the Saudis, the belief persists that this region holds the key to unlocking the mystery of Mount Sinai. Few visitors granted access to this area have reported finding compelling evidence that aligns with the biblical account. Egypt's New Wave Beach is considered a major candidate for the Red Sea crossing, a pivotal event linked to the Exodus story. By examining satellite imagery through Google Earth, researchers have identified a spot on the Egyptian side of the Gulf of Aqaba that perfectly fits the description. This location features a spacious beach where millions of people could have gathered, surrounded by canyons and mountains that would have trapped Pharaoh's army. Astonishingly, there is even an underwater land path, which would have provided a route for the Israelites to escape if the waters were parted. Divers exploring the coral reefs in this area have made intriguing discoveries. They have found coral anomalies resembling the remains of chariots, including circular patterns of metal detected by specialized equipment. This underwater landscape, reminiscent of an ancient junkyard, suggests the possibility of an army's destruction and the coral preserving the shape of debris. In the Al-Bad region of Saudi Arabia, the highest mountain range, Jabal al-Laws, stands tall. Within this range, a peak known as Jabal Makla, meaning burned mountain, has drawn considerable interest. Its distinct blackened top, visible from afar, aligns with the biblical account of God descending upon the mountain in the form of fire. Local tradition refers to this mountain as the Mountain of Moses, passed down through generations. At the foot of Jabal Makla, an ancient altar made of uncut stones without steps has been discovered. Nearby, the remains of around 12 marble pillars have been found, potentially representing the 12 tribes of Israel as described in the Exodus account. The presence of this altar and the pillars aligns closely with the biblical instructions given to Moses. Further along the route, an enormous split rock stands atop a 100-foot hill. This rock, towering between 40 and 60 feet high, exhibits a smooth split in the middle, reminiscent of the biblical account where Moses struck a rock for water to pour. 
Local veterans charged with protecting the site refer to this rock as the Split Rock of Moses. The cumulative evidence from these specific locations in Saudi Arabia provides a compelling case for Mount Sinai's true location. The underwater land path, coral anomalies resembling chariots, the burned mountain with distinctive features, the ancient altar and pillars, and the split rock align with the biblical narrative of Moses and the Exodus. Thank you for joining us on this fascinating journey. Feel free to share your thoughts on this remarkable discovery. Please like and share with your friends and family. Don't forget to subscribe to get more of these amazing videos.